Hey guys, for this simple project you'll need an alligator clip cable, a 5 watt or higher resistor of practically any value, a wooden chopstick or similar non-conductive material of similar shape, a couple of pieces of heat shrink tube or electrical tape and a couple of zip ties or electrical tape again. Once you've removed or cut one alligator clip and removed the insulation, you can solder the wire to one side of the power resistor. If you are like me, you'll forget to put the heat shrink tube before you solder. Pull the tubing all the way to completely cover the exposed lead of the resistor. To make sure you have good connection, measure the resistor from the free end of the resistor to the alligator clip. You should see the resistance of the resistor you've used on the meter. Take the free end of the resistor and tie a couple of loops around the chopstick to secure it in place. Secure the rest of the wire with a couple of zip ties. You can use electrical tape to cover the whole stick, but I think it's nicer to use a large heat shrink tube instead. And now you have your high-tech capacitor discharge tool. Go and list it on eBay. Just put vintage and NOS next to the title and it's gonna sell. Now let's see how to use your newly made tool safely. If you just got an amp or built one and you wanna test it, 
Before doing anything else, make sure your amp is not plugged to the wall outlet. Take the alligator clip lead and clip it to a known ground point in the amp. Locate the positive ends of the filter capacitors and touch the leads and hold for a couple of seconds. To make sure there's no voltage present in the amp, take the negative clip of your meter and with one hand carefully connect it to a ground point. It can be any grounded point on the chassis, but try to find one which is clear enough so that you don't accidentally touch any other exposed connection or wire in the amp. You can check the continuity to see whether you've connected it to the ground point. Then take the positive lead of your meter and connect it to the positive lead of the filter capacitor. The multimeter should be set to volts DC and select the highest range. If you see no voltage it is now safe to work on your amplifier. If you are paranoid you can perform this check several times and with different meters. Now let's power up the amp with all the tubes present. We can see the slow start of the GZ34 rectifier tube. The voltage on the first filter cap climbed up to 407 volts. When I switch the amp off, the capacitors quickly discharge back to less than 10 volts. That's because the tubes are present in the amp and they are draining the caps. Let's see what happens when we remove the power tube. We can turn the amp back on and watch the voltage climb again. Without the power tubes the voltage went up to 450 volts. When we turn the amp off, without the power tubes the voltage dropped to around 75 volts. We can use the discharge tool to drain the caps to close to zero. Now let's see what happens when we remove the preamp tubes as well. The B plus climbed up to 465 volts. And notice when I turn the amp off the voltage goes down extremely slowly.
Let's discharge the caps. Sometimes the caps may charge back up a little. You can repeat the process and it should be fine. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you would like to support my channel and help me create more content and more projects, check out my Patreon page in the link in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for their ongoing support, it really means a lot. Thanks for watching.